Welcome back to our organization and management subject. So we're now done discussing the environment forces and environmental scanning, the local and international business environment of the firm, and the phases of economic development. So to end chapter 2, we're going to discuss lesson 4, forms of business organization. So for our lesson number four, we're going to discuss the forms of business organization, which are sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. So we're going to discuss um, what is the difference between sole proprietor, partnership, and corporation, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of forming a business organization like this. So first, we have sole proprietorship. This business organization has a single owner called the proprietor, who generally is also the manager. So it means in sole proprietorship, only one manages the organization or the business. It tends to be small service type business and retail establishments. So for the service type, we have the physicians, the lawyers, and accountants. So ito yung mga um, ginagawa ding business, yung pagbibigay ng service. So for example, to doctors, to, then to lawyers, and also to accountants. And also the small retail establishments like for example, a simple sari sari store or a simple um, retail store wherein the owner is only one. The owner receives all profits, absorbs all losses, and is solely responsible for all debts of the business. So since in sole proprietorship, isa lang yung may are, so all the profits or all the losses, um, sa kanya lahat mapupunta. And also, since siya nga lang din mag-isa, siya din yung mag-isa magmamanage ng business. So, he is the sole responsible for the debts of the business. So, next one, we have partnership. Partnership. It is a business owned and operated by two or more persons who bind themselves to contribute money, property, or industry to a common fund with the intention of dividing the profits among themselves. So, kanina sa sole proprietorship, so may are at nagmamanage ng business is isa lang. Dito sa partnership, there are two or more persons. So, and then, tung mga taong to, nagko-contribute sila ng money or either property nila, or industry, yung industry, yan yung service. And then, pinagsama-sama nila yun into a common fund para mabuo yung partnership. And then, kapag nag-operate na yung business, so ang intention nila is dividing all the profits na makukuha ng business among themselves. Each partner is personally liable for any debt incurred by the partnership, except limited partner. So, yung mga partners sa partnership, since sila ngayon na contribute na money, property, or industry, and then yung profits is i-divide din sa kanila. So, any liability or utang na ma-incur ni partnership is personally liable sila. Meron lang tayong exception. So, meron tayong tinatawag na limited partner. Sila yung mga... Kahit anong mangyari, hindi sila pwede maging personally liable dun sa mga utang ng partnership. So, we have general and limited partner. So, yung general, sila yung um, may liability sa mga debt na pwede ma-incur yung partnership. And then, si limited yung mga hindi personally liable. So, usually, kaya merong limited partner kasi sila yung um, mas mababa yung contribution or hindi mas malaki yung um, involvement dun sa mismong partnership. Kaya mostly si general partner, which is siya yung mas malaki yung contribution, so siya yung mas malaki yung um, mismong um, ginagawa para dun sa partnership, kaya siya yung mas um, personally liable. And then sa formation pa lang ng partnership, sinasabi na if you are general partner or limited partner. So, based yun sa pag-uusap nyo ng mga partners. Actually, there are more 
um, other types of partners which is mas madidiscuss siya sa mga accounting subjects nyo. And the last one is corporation. Corporation. So it is a business owned by its stockholders. It is an artificial being created by operation of law, having the rights of succession and the powers, attributes, and properties expressly authorized by law or incident to its existence. So first, itong corporation ay artificial being. Ibig sabihin, um, ginawa siya through operation ng law. So meron tayong tinatawag na Corporation Code of the Philippines or yung corporate law. So it will be... Um, so if someday, if you will take up accountancy, so sa law subjects, um, madidiscuss din tong corporation law. And then all the details. So for this one, so paano nga ba nagiging stockholder yung isang tao sa corporation? So it is true by buying shares or some stocks dun sa business na yon. So if nakabili ka na, Nung stocks, ang kapalit nun is yung stock certificate, so as a proof na ikaw ay isang stockholder. So, itong si corporation, meron siyang rights of succession. So, ibig sabihin, if one stockholder sa isang corporation ay mamatay, so hindi pa mamamatay yung buong corporation. So, pwede mong ilipat yung stocks na nabili mo dun sa mga heirs mo. And then... They have the power and attributes and properties na expressly authorized by law din. So, since meron nga tayong code na nakapalibot dito sa corporation, so lahat ng um, ginagawa under this corporation must follow those rules. The stockholders are not personally liable for the corporation's death. So, since itong si corporation is meron siyang sariling being or di ba nga isa siyang artificial being. So, ibig sabihin, ang liable dun sa death ng corporation ay si corporation. So, hindi siya ma-extend dun sa mga stockholders. So again, under the forms of business organization, we have sole proprietorship who is owned and operated by only one person. And then partnership who is owned by two or more persons. And then corporation who is a separate artificial being. And in order for you to be a stockholder of a corporation, you need to acquire stocks or shares of that corporation. So, now that we have discussed the forms of business organization, let us know what are the advantages and disadvantages of forming those types of business organization in our society. So, first one is sole proprietorship. So, what are the advantages of forming this one? So, first, the business is simple to set up. Compared to the other forms of business organization, sole proprietorship is simple to set up since compared to others, it only requires minimal paperwork and legal documents to establish. So, example dun sa mga legal documents is yung registration mo sa DTI and also sa BIR. Number two, decision is clear-cut. There's only one owner, so all the decision will be coming from him or her. Number three, earnings are taxed only once as personal income. So, the earnings of a sole proprietorship will be under his or her personal income. Thus, it will be taxed the same as his or her personal income. Earnings are not subject to other taxes. So, lahat ng makikita or lahat ng profit ni ni proprietor dito sa sole proprietorship is papasok lang din dun sa personal income niya, which is isang best lang siya pwedeng matak. So, so for ABM 12, I hope na aalala nyo yung um, discussion natin under taxation wherein yung personal income nung, nung isang tao and plus yung mga income dahil sa business niya ay pinagsama-sama 
para dun sa computation ng tax. So, I hope naaalala nyo yun kung paano natin na-compute before. And for um, ABM 11, so don't worry, for your future accounting subject, so you will be discussing also that. And then, what are the disadvantages of sole proprietorship? So, number one, the owner has unlimited liability. The downside of having your own business is that you assume all the liabilities. So, since ikaw lang yung may-ari, ikaw yung nakakuha ng profit, so any liability na ma-incur ng business is ikaw lang din yung pwedeng sumagot. Number two, the owner makes the decisions. It can be an advantage that the decision is clear-cut, but since you are the only one making the decision, it can be a disadvantage too. So why? So it is possible that you are not aware of some aspects of the business, or you are not knowledgeable enough in the chosen field. So since ikaw lang lahat mag-isa, so there are some decisions na possible na hindi ka 100% sure or hindi mo talaga alam. Number three, the business dies with the owner. So once the owner dies, the business he or she owns dies too. It is not possible for succession. So next one, ano naman yung advantages and disadvantages ng pagtatayo ng isang partnership? So for advantages, number one, business is relatively easy to set up. So it is like the sole proprietorship. So, it is easy to set up because compared to corporation, it requires minimal paperwork and legal documents to establish. Number two, more management skills are available. Two heads are better than one. With more than one like-minded individual, there are more opportunities to increase their collaborative skill set. People in the partnership can distribute the workload as well. So, yun yung advantage if hindi lang ikaw mag-isa sa, sa business. So, if dalawa or mas marami kayong partner, so, mas malaki din yung pwedeng maging impact ng collaboration ng mga, pwede, ng mga naiisip nyo. And also, yung workload sa isang business or sa isang organization is mahahati-hati nyo din. Number three, earnings are taxed only once as a personal income of the partners. The earnings of the partnership will be distributed to the partners and then it will be taxed as their personal income. Ibig sabihin din yun, yung mga earnings ng isang partnership, hindi siya liable sa taxes. Magiging liable lang siya kapag na-distribute na yung earnings na yun dun sa mga partners. And it will be taxed as their personal income. What are the disadvantages of partnership? So, number one, there is an unlimited liability for the partners. In a partnership, all members are personally liable for business-related debts and may be pursued in a lawsuit except for limited partners. So, katulad no, in-explain natin kanina. Number two, Decision-making can be complicated. So, by having more than one person involved in the business decision, partners may disagree on some aspects of the operation. So, kaya pwede siya maging complicated. Number three, the company has a limited ability to raise capital. Since there are only two or more partners, the resources to be able to raise capital will be limited too. So, unlike in a corporation na mas marami yung pwedeng mag-invest mag through stocks, so dito kay partnership, since ang may-ari lang ay two or more person, so limited din siya sa resources. Number four, partnerships can be unstable. So, due to disagreements, mismanagements, lack of additional resources, partnership can be unstable. So, last one, the advantages and disadvantages of a corporation. 
So, first advantage ng corporation is that there is limited liability for owners. So, again, in a corporation, sino ba yung mga owners? So, sila yung stockholders. So, as discussed earlier, hindi liable si stockholders sa any utang na ma-incur ni corporation. So, who will be liable? Mismong si corporation. Number two, a corporation has a separate legal status. It is able to raise large sums of capital through issuing bonds and stocks. So, in a corporation, in order to raise funds, so, nagsasell sila ng shares ng corporation. So, possible na mismong si corporation yung mag-open ng shares nila mismo or pwedeng yung mga shareholders na nung corporation is magbebenta pa sila nung shares nila sa iba pang mga may-ari. So, dun nila nagagawa yung pag-raise ng capital. Number three, corporation has an eternal life or perpetual existence. So, there is no limit to the life of a corporation since ownership of it can pass through many generations of investors. An extinction of a stockholder doesn't mean the extinction of the corporation. The deceased stockholders or shareholders can be inherited by his or her heirs. So, unlike sa sa sole proprietorship and sa partnership, um, once na may mamatay doon, so ibig sabihin, yung mismong business din nila is may extinct na din. Pero dito sa corporation, if one of the shareholders will be, um, will die, hindi automatically is mamamatay din yung corporation. So, pwede niyang ipasa yung shares niya sa mga heirs. Number four, it is able to recruit professional management and to change bad management due to separation of ownership from management. So, there's a separation between the owners and the management. A business can be handled well, especially if the professionals are the one managing the business or organization. So, ano naman yung mga disadvantages ng isang corporation? So, number one, corporate income is taxed twice. Once as corporate profits, then as personal income or through the dividends. So, depending on the type of corporation, it may pay taxes on its income, after which shareholders pay taxes on any dividends received. So, income can be taxed twice. So, yun yung tinatawag nating double taxation, which is very legal here in the Philippines. So, depending on the kind of corporation, the various types of income and other taxes that must be paid can require a substantial amount of paperwork. So, hindi lang siya double yung tax, so mas may paperwork pa siya. So, dun sa corporate profit, so, normally dito, 30%, so, yun yung income tax. And aside from that, meron din tayong VAT, meron din tayong mga withholding taxes na binabayaran ng corporate, ng corporation. And then, kapag namimigay na si corporation ng profit nila sa mga shareholders through dividend, so, meron din yung tax. So, yun yung tinatawag natin na double taxation. Number two, um, there are greater possibilities for management disagreements. So, many people are involved. That's why disagreements between the management is unavoidable. Number three, there is a possibility of conflicting goals between the owners of the corporation and the management. So, when there are several investors with no clear majority interest, the management team may direct business operations rather than the owners. So, disagreements can arise because of that. So, possible na yung goals ng owners is hindi aligned dun sa goals ni management. So, isa yon sa pwede maging disadvantage ng corporation. And last one, Corporation is subject to more government requirements. So, aside dun sa BIR, so dun sa taxes, so uh, meron pa silang SSS, PhilHealth, Pag-ibig, and then business permits every year. And legally speaking, in corporation, mas, marami ta mas maraming rules and regulation na dapat sundin. And yun nga, government requirements din. 
So that's the advantages and disadvantages of sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. So we're done now in the last lesson of Chapter 2, which is the forms of business organization. So again, to wrap up what we have discussed in Chapter 2, so we've discussed the environment forces and environmental scanning, the local and international business environment of the firm, the phases of economic development, and the forms of business organization. So that ends Chapter 2, The Firm and Its Environment. So please be ready for your essay next week about the Chapter 2. Thank you.